Welcome to another edition of Thursday's Weekly Access Stream. My name is Sammy Fish, and I'm pressing buttons on the side to make sure everything's working. How's it going, y'all? <laughs> We're going to do Lene today. Woo! All right, so I'm really excited to do this one. I think Lene is a... Um, I think Lene is probably, in my opinion, is probably the best character to learn if you want to learn the game's fundamentals and mechanics. She is just, like, such a straightforward character that has a bunch of tools that are very good. Um, and sort of teach you, teaches you the game uh, pretty darn well. More than Hyde, I think, by a very small margin, I think Hyde teaches you a different game, but I think Lene really teaches you like sort of how space and sp uh, how space works in this game in a, in a pretty different way um, because she has to occupy spaces in a different manner than Hyde does. So let's do a, a quick overview of the character really quick. First off, this is a character... Um, just go like through some strengths and weaknesses really quick on the center all right this character i think first and foremost the thing you notice about this character is that she's fast she's a fast character she has very good um dash startup and she has a very good dash speed and she gets in your face pretty darn quickly uh on top of that though she has like a bunch of different movement options that a lot of characters don't have uh if while you're running you tap dash uh with either six ab or macro uh you'll be able to do a roll input and the, it's not the best role in the world it's not like a cvs2 role where you're invincible the whole way through uh you're kind of just invincible through the middle so it's like supposed to be if you're going to use it in neutral sort of like a well-timed thing a lot of times you'll actually end up only using this to gain a little bit of speed or a little bit of distance faster than you normally would and a lot of times it helps you like keep the corner um take position after a knockdown etc etc stuff like that uh, other than that you don't really use the role too much there's one or two practical applications for it in combos and stuff like that but not too much um doing great Lene is awesome Lene is awesome i really do like watching this character and i like watching per, uh the better players uh play this character which is hopefully why i can get to some footage today uh, yeah, good run speed, good uh, good dash startup animation. She has a pretty strong back dash. It's not the best. It's not like hide status, but it goes really far. It starts up in. Let's not say wrong things. I have the I have the the frame data right here. It starts up in three frames, which is super good. It goes pretty far. Uh, it does not have that much of a longer of a back dash duration. So uh, the the main the main good thing about it is that she travels far and starts up fast so by the time you're like out of here like the full invul is like eight frames in so you're, you're actually traveled quite a bit with the eight frames of invul that you have um and then hopefully outside of their range uh she has a lot of unique air movement as well she's one of two characters that has a double de uh double jump with akatsuki uh she also has the ability to do uh whoop. Uh, to be able to do an air dash out of the air from uh, Kuga, which allows her to do some unique move uh, moves with it. Like that. Uh, it is not something you'll see all that often. It's also pretty scary when the opponent shields it because that's just asking you to get anti-air punish. If you're playing against a character like Hyde, that's like asking him to shield 3CU into death, right? Um, she has a dive kick as well with jump 2B. This is unique to only a few characters in the game, and it's a very, very strong tool. Uh, it's super steep, which is really, really nice, uh, but it does move her slightly forward when she does the startup animation. You can see, like, I'm, like, right around here. As soon as I do... Where's move menu? As soon as I start moving forward, you can see she's already, like, moving away from the end that I lined up with, and she's moving forward. So really good you can use it to beat throws really nicely uh which is super duper nice so you can do something like if you expect to throw jump back dive kick uh frame data is at best even and that's at like the very very tippy like you're hitting like their shins like all the way down here uh it doesn't happen very often but there are moments where hold on let me see if i can get this where it is safe so as long as you're not doing it like that and tagging their head uh you're you're more you're very likely to be safe uh obviously more unsafe if it gets shielded but uh we get get to that when it happens right a uh, double jump dive kick air dash uh okay other strengths to this she has some really strong fast normals that uh complement her play style pretty well 
5A is great hitbox with five, that is five frames and goes pretty darn far for a five frame normal. Uh, 2A doesn't go as far, but uh, we'll go to that in a second. This is a fantastic button. It is a six frame mid that uh, goes really far for being a six frame move. Just an absurdly good counter poke tool because uh, if you hit this, you're almost always getting a 2C. Uh, and then she has long range moves that are pretty, that, that can test the speed of some other characters moves. Uh, 2C is a 12 frames. Gonna look that up because we have that. Uh, yes. I believe all our C normals are 12 frames, if I recall correctly. Uh, like 5C, 2C, 6C. Yes, that is correct. Okay. Um, so all of that's really good. So she has a lot of good 12 frame mids that control that range really, really well. Uh, so that's stuff super good. Uh, so she has a lot of really good normals. Like this is 12 frames, so it's not like fast per se, but for the range that it takes up, it is should be considered uh, decently fast. Like characters like Akatsuki have like a similar range to C, or sorry, similar time to C. Like it has amount the same amount of frames, but doesn't go nowhere near as far as this 2C does. So she has a lot of ability to like walk back and test in that range. Um, other general things you want to say about the character? She has great space control with stuff like Kuga. Uh, she has great defensive tools. She has an array of DPs that uh, are uh, similar to the rest of the cast, like that. ADP, BDP. Uh, CTP is, doesn't have a huge niche in terms of where it's supposed to exist, but it does exist. Um, C C Hien has its uh, tools as a defensive opportunity. Uh, and then she has force function, which is like an SIK style dodge. If you hit it again, you have the ability to do a... Uh, there you go. Yeah, SNK style dodge into attack move, which is this. Weaknesses. A uh, few weaknesses to the character. I don't think that they are incredibly detrimental, but at the super duper highest level, they are something to consider for sure. Uh, she has a below average damage without meter. For the most part, she kind of exists under 3.5 even on C, uh, C starters, which kind of sucks for the character. Um, she really needs meter in order to break into that 4k pretty easily and uh, that kind of sucks. Uh, although the meter is well spent, she doesn't actually need meter for neutral all that much uh, or combo extensions or anything like that. That stuff's really nice, but having to use your meter like that is not the best, right? You actually kind of want to use it for stuff like extending pressure, making yourself safe, etc, etc. She doesn't, she wants to do damage, she doesn't get that opportunity. Uh, stagger windows are kind of a bit much. I, I kind of don't like them. Uh, a lot of people say that they're decent or they're good enough, but I kind of wish that they were slightly better. Um, just like very slightly. It's not the play style of the character. She's not supposed to stagger you, uh, stagger pressure you to death. And she has different ways to make her gaps in block strings in order to make her scary. You know, instead of doing something like this, you can do like that and beat people out. Uh, that's really, you know, pretty simple. It's pretty uh simple to explain but uh stagger windows are some good are good on some like 5a has a pretty good stagger window but something like 2a really does not have a good stagger window like at all at all um same thing with like 2c like it's okay uh it's pretty darn good but like 2b like you kind of have to like cancel it out and like even secondarily the problem with like canceling out two b is that it doesn't move you far forward funnily enough is that this move actually moves you forward uh after the animation's done not when the hit's done kind of weird but yeah anyway uh last thing honestly i think that this is like just a personal problem but you can consider it a weakness i think it's a weakness where uh she has two special moves that encompass the same direction with um, slashes and uh, fly. I forgot what this move's called. We generally call this one Mujin, and then we call this one uh, Hien, which are their Japanese names. Uh, and they're one syllable, easy to say names. So, um, this is two one four. This is six three two one four. So sometimes, if you're not like crisp crips and not you're not going straight down when you're doing an input, you might accidentally get the other move uh especially if you're like me who if you learned how to play fighting games in one game or another some people taught you uh especially like games like street fighter 4 
where the game specifically would tell you uh do half circle forwards for fireballs it will make sure like in the coding of the game make sure that it doesn't get you an accidental dp uh i did that when i was younger uh, i am now paying the price for it okay so that's the strength of weaknesses her unique traits are that she actually has a double jump and a roll so she has unique uh, input or unique uh What's it called? She has a unique movement. Her Vorpal trait is that her uh, her force function gets slightly better recovery, but not anything worth keeping Vorpal for. Um, it's really, don't think about it. It's not that big of a deal. All right, let's get into normals. We just talked about this a second ago, 5A. 5A, five frames and has a pretty good stagger window. It's also negative two. This character likes to do um what's it called this character likes to do uh, strike throw mix-ups and she has the startup frames or the dash startup to do it so negative two is really really good for that sort of thing it also has a good stagger window so you can really wait until you can get a move out like that which is really nice Ooh. as you can see um 5b Oh, uh, second, last thing. This is her best rebeat button. Um, oh, come on. This is her best rebeat button. Uh, whoop. 2A is also pretty good too, but it's one frame more of recovery than 5A is. So on all of her rebeats, she gets one frame less of advantage afterwards. So uh, try to say, if you were thinking about rebeating, try to save 5A for that. Uh, if not, it's not the worst detriment in the world to use 2A instead. Uh, and you kind of like using 5A in this capacity anyway, because it's got a nice range to it. But, you know, things to learn once you get, like, more in depth with the character, right? 5B. 5B is a really, really strong move only because it has... Uh, it's, like, you look at this move, it's, like, not the best range. But it's six frames. It has a decent enough um, active frames and uh it is got a pretty okay stagger stagger window for you to play with uh, as opposed to other moves which is nice uh it's also negative two but it has slightly more recovery than 5a so it's gonna be harder to use in this capacity uh but you can use it like that uh things like that could be trick people into doing it if you start doing 5b into throw Stuff like that's really good. Um, super nice hitbox, so you'll use it a ton in combos. You will use this a ton in combos. Uh, let me see if I can come up with something off the top of my head really quick. You're blocking. That's not nice. Oops. There it is. Um, why don't I do a Hien combo, actually? There you go. So yeah, super nice hitbox for that. You'll see a lot of different applications for how that works in a combo. It just has like nice active frames, so you can even do and do stuff like super late cancel, um, whoop, Mujin like that, and you can actually get people to swing into it sometimes, which is really nice. Five C. This is your damage starter. It doesn't have as much range as some of her other normals do, like six C. Um, There you go. Or 2C, sorry. Like 2C. Uh, but it is good damage starter. It is. It does have multi hits to it. So it's really nice. It's pretty easy to confirm. Um, it's good space control, but it is 12 frames. So it's one of those things where it's like it covers a nice area on the screen, but it is 12 frames. So, you know, be wary when you throw it out. Uh, she also has a follow-up to her 5C, which is 5CC, which is this uh, slash down hit afterwards, right? So if you... Right. Oops. If, you full, uh, if you full charge that, you get a uh, overhead. It's 
okay. It's not that good. It's not that good. It's one of those things that you use um, every now and then, maybe with CS. You kind of just test people out. You go, is it going to block it? Okay, no. Then, okay, yes. I CS and I keep pressure, right? It's slow because it is a 12 frame move into a 25 frame overhead, basically. Um, however, you can start your own little silly mix-up by doing a non-charged version of it, like this. As you can see, it's not an overhead, but if people expect it and they start swinging into that uh, gap, that doing a uh, doing a quick version or doing whoop, uh, doing that canceled like this will catch people off guard sometimes. Oops. So, it does have some stuff, but honestly, there's no reason for the opponent to bite here. Um, the whole idea of the mix-up was supposed to be that she has the charge 5C uh, option, or she goes low with the 2C or 2B, but, uh, you know, it's not that very good. So, I don't consider this as an overhead mix-up. However, if you have CS, you can get some good plus frames afterwards, or even... Uh, whoops. Uh, cancel it into EX Kuga for more for more plus frames. Run your mix up. It will be unexpected once or twice. You might run into people who actually um, don't block it. You know, uh, with Lene, you know, you have basically zero overheads. This technically counts, but it's not that good. All right, two A. Two A is a decent, uh, decent crouching poke. I say crouching poke because the first hit's actually a mid, which really freaking sucks. It does not look like it, and other moves would tell you that that's not how it is. But as you can see, the first hit is a mid. I say first hit because if you do it, if you chain it, the second hit is actually a low, uh, which is also a five frame startup. So technically, 2AA is a 10 frame low that she has. Um, it is negative three, so you can play with the stagger, uh, play with the idea of. Uh, messing people up like you know like throwing people like that however the stagger window is freaking atrocious it is atrocious uh so usually a lot of the times you'll see something like this where you're playing with uh just doing one after another like this or doing a cancel into that because it does create a natural gap for oops for someone to swing in like that. So, creates a natural gap with uh, 5C whoop, and any other C normal because they're all 12 frames, which is really nice. However, it itself is a mid, and uh, honestly, like the mix up is whether she's gonna press another one or not, like that. So, that's kind of uh, what it is there. It's it's all right. Um, the second one's also three uh, negative three as well. Like I said, Honestly, don't expect to use this a lot. Like, you'll see a lot of people start mashing in that situation because uh, being able to cancel into the next move, like, the stagger window isn't huge, but is functionable to a degree. I don't like it. I think it's a really bad stagger window, but it is functionable to a degree. You uh, play around with it, right? Negative three means it's slightly harder to do a uh, tick throw startup after risk, especially considering you're at a closer range. So making that 2A whiff uh, as a response is a little bit harder, but it's okay. 2B. 2B is technically a forward, uh, a low that leans forward, which is really weird because, uh, like I said before, it is a low that moves her forward after the move is done. As you can see, unlike 2C, which moves her forward with the move, you can see that she kind of switches in position afterwards. This isn't, this is, this isn't great because you kind of want her to increase her range or be able to go back into an area where this is good space control. That's it. Kind of sucks that like when you commit to a normal like this, that you're actually closer to the to the opponent. Like if you whiff it or it's on block, that means it's more in your situation. But with the rebeat system on block, at least you're closer to do the rest of your stuff. That's nice. Uh, like I said before, if you rebeat into something like 2A, then you won't go. You won't go anywhere. 
Um, actually, her fast is low, which is kind of stupid. Like, like I said, 2AA is a low, but it's 10 frames because you have to do the, the chain combo in order to get it. Uh, 2B itself is 8 frames, so... Uh, yeah. Decent stagger window as well. You're able to play with that quite a bit. 2C. Pretty big low with good scaling. It has an uh, okay stagger window for you to go into similarly ranged moves like that. Um, it's just a really, really big low, so you're able to control even out here. Uh, like it. You're able to control this space pretty good out here, even though all of our normals are pretty stumpy, right? You have this great low that can do it. Um, it's also, for the most part, pretty much anywhere that you can able to hit a 2S, you can able to, like, get something else off it. You can do 2C, 2A, Rebe into dash B, uh, into B, Hien. It's a very, very hard combo, but it is possible. There it is. I'm trying to cancel into Hien. Uh, I actually did some <laughs> combo practice before this, so I can have my muscle memory ready. But don't expect good combos. Don't whiff this. Don't whiff this shit. This is like 41 frames of whiff recovery. As you can see, I'm going to hold up after I press it. Like, good god. Uh, just takes forever. Please don't whiff this. It's hard to whiff because she moves herself slightly forward. But if you're trying to use this at max range, you might actually whiff this. Like, right around here. It will suck. Don't do it. All right, jump A. Uh, it's used some combos. It's got a nice air-to-air -air hitbox because of how high it is. Uh, if I can do this right. As you can see, uh, it does actually go almost that high, but it's it's okay, you know. It has some also some weird whiff application to it. Like that, there you go. Uh, it's really tricky and kind of extra. But she has, uh, she has quite a bit of stuff that can do, uh, that can do that. Uh, you can also do some pretty neat, tricky stuff with assault. This is, I think, it's probably thing that you take away other than using it for combos. Uh, oops, not jumping, but crouching. Um, it does whiff on, uh, it does whiff on crouchers when assaults. So you can do some pretty silly stuff with that as well, especially if they're uh, expecting jump six B. I have an easy way to do a whiff into a throw. Uh, that will get you a throw every now and then. Jump B. Jump B itself is normally used in combos. Uh, it will, if you have people actually standing on you, uh, it does have a really nice, like, super high window that you can work with here. So if you jump in, you're able to use this really high, which is nice, right? Um, other than that, you'll just use this in combos. A lot of times, there's, like, some pretty tricky stuff, uh, that is fixed up because this has a nice hitbox like that. Um, if I can get this right. I'll do a better combo later, but that's the idea. Uh, jump C. This is your main assault button. It's only three frames slower than uh, jump B. And it has a great air to ground hitbox. You can see... You can do it on characters while rising if they're standing. Obviously not if they're crouching. But uh, you can do this pretty darn high while you're doing an assault. And still combo into it, which is really nice, right? Uh, over, other than that, that's pretty much all you can think about it. It does uh, allow you to combo into dive kick on some heavy, heavier scaled combos. So being able to do stuff like that is really nice. Uh, command normal. So we have 66CC. This is called Wolf's Howl as well. Uh, so that's a, a sick freaking name. I wish we called uh, special normals, but we don't. Um, we'll just call this 6CC. So it's a target combo that has three apple or three moves to it. One, two, three. Last one has a big gap in front of it. However, um, what's nice about it is that the second and third are CS and EX cancelable on whiff. So the first one. No good, right? Second one. Oops. And then, just to show it off. 
Uh, that was an EX Kuga, but that's the idea anyway. You can get it. Um, so it's a good way to force things with resources as well. If you're doing something like that, you're able to like basically do whatever you want into an EX move and basically force afterwards. Other than that, you're mostly going to use this in combos. This is best use is that it's actually um, great to end combos with just 6 CC. And uh, by that, I mean... And then you let him drop right there. This gives you the ability to actually dash up on the opponent and uh, meaty them, even if they back tech. Uh, if you don't want to do that, you have the... And also, the second hit allows you to extend the combos in weird ways. Well, with meter, I mean. I shouldn't say weird. Oof, I missed the Dragon's Fan afterwards. But that's how you extend your combos. Um, You do the last ender if you're in the corner. Because the whole point of it is not to allow them to get any pressure away from you when they back tech, right? So if you're in the corner, then you, oops, you can just do that. Usually you do it off um, something like this, like that. Uh, that usually allows you the ability to get a hard knockdown and still get Oki there, which is nice. Uh, so if you want to like slow down everything that I said, basically 6cc is like use the two hits in, uh, in mid screen, use three hits on in the corner. It's a great ender. As, uh, it's a great combo ender. Jump 6B. Jump 6B has the best air to ground hitbox for its speed. Um, similarly to things like Eltnum and um, Eltnum and Wagner. Jump A. This is sort of Lene's version of that. It's slightly slower, but it will do. Um, it also has a charge. Uh, it also has a charge application to it. I'm going to mess this up. I'm going to mess this up, right? Whoops. There you go. You can do some silly increase stuff with that, but as you can see, it's pretty hard to do that, and you'll pretty much expect it because of how low it starts increasing. It's pretty fast increase, though. It's nice for that. Jump 2B, we talked about this a little bit. Uh, dive kick, a pretty combo stable tool. As you can see, I already used it twice in the combos that I was doing it on. super good for ending combos like that because a jump 2b into 2c is probably like one of the consistent combo tools that she has you can use it in, in neutral you can also use it to side swap in some certain situations uh, a lot of the times if you can get stuff like there you go and then you can use it to cross up and in, in uh for combos and take up positions elsewhere uh, that is a really dumb combo to do it off of, but it was the first one that I was I thought about, so please bear with me. Alright, Dash B. Dash B, uh, it's a pretty weird move, but you'll use it in a lot of different situations. It's a one of those moves, I think, that once you get better with the character, you end up learning why this move ends up being so good. One of the best things is that it's actually negative one on block, which is super nice. Uh, negative one on block makes it a real threat for move characters that have six frame normals, uh, because... Because it's a dash move, you can just mash your 5A or mash 5A afterwards. And it'll scare a lot of characters into pressing buttons. If you want to be a little bit more ballsy than that, you can uh, do some other stuff with it too. Uh, but if you're expecting people to swing afterwards because it's negative one, there's a lot of things you can do. Oops. Cancel into Mujin. Oops. Cancel into Kuga. I should uh, show that you can actually stick your hand into this blender. There you go. So that stuff is uh, pretty scary for the character going to. So a lot of the times, once you've established the fact that you will do something like this, or more likely going to uh, Mujin because it is a safer move, uh, you'll be able to, be able to do this. Well, I have him to press buttons afterwards. Imagine him not pressing buttons and you get to throw afterwards, right? Uh, nine frames and uh, three hits, so it's easy to combo. I was doing this a second ago. 
Ah, there you go. Super fast and has a great hitbox and has three hits, so it's actually pretty easy to confirm if you don't suck like me. There you go. I almost got it. Uh, so that's really nice. 6-6-C, it's kind of like 5-C, but bigger. There you go. Like this. It's like 5-C, it has the same animation, but it moves her slightly forward and has a slightly bigger animation. If you hit it, uh, you're able to combo it into increase uh, B Kuga, and you're able to get a combo off it. I'm going to mess this up. Okay, I got parts of it. You can ex extrapolate the rest of the combo. Um, useful and neutral, and it's pretty easy to confirm because it's actually three hits to it. Like, that's crazy. So it's super easy to confirm in neutral. Uh, and it just has a great hitbox, so even you can just cancel into regular Kuga and keep yourself safe or put pressure from that way. Force Function. Force Function is an SIK dodge that uh, with a follow-up. So at... It is kind of a weird button or kind of a weird move, but it is uh, mainly used as this ability to be able to anti-air people pretty quickly because it does have a one frame startup for the strike invul animation, which is 14 frames of strike invul. And then it starts up at fast as seven frames. That's if you animate that as, or if you do that as quick as possible, it's quicker if you actually dodge something. Um, if I can get... As you can see, if you just doing this in neutral like this, you don't get any sort of like flash or anything like that. But if you actually successfully dodge a move, get a nice little flash here that will indicate that the character can actually input the uh, following move afterwards faster. I forgot the better combo. Please uh, forgive me for that, but use CS for full combo if you want to. Uh, the very neat thing about this is that it is a, think of it as a completely buttoned meter reversal and, or sorry, completely buttoned reversal, which is nice about it is that you could actually do this as 4 BC, you can, or 1 BC. You can do this from a block animation. So unlike when you're trying to DP something, you have to switch from block over to doing a DP input. You can keep holding block or keep holding down back and then press this button. So you really have the ability to do things with your reaction timing rather than having to go, ah, oh, that's an anti-air. I have to do my, or sorry, that's an air move. I have to do my anti-air. I'm going to now have to transition into doing the motion of the input and then having the startup happen. None of that is applicable here. You just press two buttons, one frame startup, and that way it's literally like one of the fastest uh, moves that you can do uh, for a reversal. Throw. All right, the reason why we're talking about throw is because throw is a very, very critical part of this character's toolkit. It is super duper important, and I cannot stress how important it really, really is. Uh, the reason why I have to stress how important it is, is because it is the core of her character. The reason why she moves fast, the reason why she has all this movement, the reason why she has things like a, uh, a negative 2, 5A, stuff like that, is because she is a strike throw character. Um, the, also, this sounds dumb, but is definitely a thing that you have to consider this character's whiff throw animation and her animation startup in general for her throw is very minimal and very hard to see because one it is different and two it is not where you normally expect to look for when you're looking for throw animations when you're looking for a character's animation for a throw here i'll just do this when you normally have them do a throw, you see the character usually goes up here and does a, a big arm swing thing. This makes it very easy to see that it's a whiff throw. However, if you're Lene, it's very hard to see the startup of this throw. It's something that is unique to the character and is one of those things where it's like, yeah, all of her frame data is pretty normal. Her throw is technically slightly better than a lot of other characters. But this animation is actually a specific design on making the character slightly better at strike throw mix-ups. Do not 
sell that short. That is a big deal. Be just because it starts up in the same frames doesn't mean you can exactly see it. If a move starts up in 20 frames, but 19 frames of it is the character standing still, yes, it starts up in 20 frames, but you only have one frame to see it. Think about it that way. You have a lot less frames for your eyes to see that the character is going into a throw animation. And that is really, really good. Unlike other characters where you get the whole throw animation, you get uh, the ability to have that huge tech window. Think about it like this character has that startup less of tech uh, of ability to tech window. If you ever watched, yeah, exactly. So I, I encourage you to actually watch a Lene play. You'll see a lot of people don't actually tech Lene throws. Uh, it's because hers, in my opinion, is slightly better than the rest of the cast. Uh, and I think that's completely by design, I should say. Whew. All right, moving on. Uh, that's all of our normal moves. Let's go into special moves. Special moves. Uh, this is the reason why I think I love watching and playing this character. It's her very unique fireball called Kuga. Kuga is a uh, a very short range projectile. When you look at it normally, you're like, this is kind of a weird projectile. It goes fast. It only goes a certain range. Um, you know, it's not really a projectile and you would be right. It's not normally a projectile. You can think about this more as a poke. Think of this as just like a, a move, a special motion move that is a poke. But unlike normals, you can cancel into it, which makes it slightly more useful. Uh, has longer startup, obviously, but yeah. So A is slower, but uh, slower, but safer. B is faster, but less safe. A B also goes slightly farther. Let me go round start. As you can see. Uh, it can be used for basically resetting uh, pressure, stuff like that. You can do some pretty tricky stuff like that, like dashing up afterwards. You're negative in almost every situation where you do a dash up Kuga, but... If the character does, if the opponent doesn't expect it, you have the ability to do some pretty silly stuff, especially if you're getting into these sort of like, ex like areas where it's slightly farther out. I'm looking at frame data right now. Uh, you can get to a situation where it's like actually plus with dash cancel, but obviously that's going to warrant some sort of response from the opponent. Even if you're not, oops, even if you're not. Uh, you have the ability to like get into that range right here. This is kind of where she wants to be to begin with. So if she guesses right in certain situations, she might be able to force function. She might be able to mash back. She might be able to get a throw. Opponent might even panic throw and you get a throw tech afterwards. And then you're plus in that situation. Uh, C version is, in my opinion, one of the best metered options in the entire game because of how incredibly versatile it is. C Kuga not only is a big projectile but it's able to extend combos extend pressure um cover a shit ton of space get people to uh make moves safer has the ability to do really whatever you want with it uh it is one of those things where it is just incredibly strong uh only thing i'll say is be wary that normally as you can see, it's five hits when you do it at range. Be wary that when you do it this close, not all of the hits will hit through. Only three hits hit up close, and that'll be varied depending on which one you use. All right, TK Kuga. TK, uh, if you're just sort of learning what that move is or what that means, Tiger Knee. So in old Street Fighter, the input for a uh, for the Tiger Knee actually included you doing up forward. So it included you canceling the startup of your jump cancel or canceling the startup of your jump animation by pressing a button. The character would lean into the move and do his Tiger Knee, right? So that's why it's called a Tiger Knee input. So you're ending with an up forward. Technically, you can also end with an up back if the move uh, allows it. But the idea being is that you do this with the fastest possible ability off the ground, right? So instead of doing a jump and you do a normal like that, you can do a super fast version of this. I will say, as someone who has played a lot of fighting games, Undernight might be the easiest game to get TK inputs in. I have no clue. I can't explain it to you. I mess up with some other things. Like if you ask me to do two, two inputs, good. Go I'm out the door. See you later. And my character, my main character has a two, two input for a reversal. I hate that shit. 
But TKs, literally every day of the week. It is so easy to do TK inputs in this game. And I love it to death. If you want to practice doing it, TK inputs, I suggest doing it in Under Night. You will learn how to do it as fast as possible because the game will let you. I love TKing inputs just with my heart. I love TKing inputs. So I, this is super, like, just one of my favorite things about the character. But to talk actually about the character, this is seriously one of the cooler tools that she has. Uh, when you do a TK input uh, for Kuga, you get Air Kuga, and I'll do this in the air so you can see the different angles. As you can see, A input is more of a 45 degree angle, B is more of like a 40 degree angle downwards. This allows you to control different spaces. Um, as you can see, B will go here, A will go over here, right? It is, when you TK it, it is plus, which is crazy. It is crazy. Let me tell you why it's crazy. It's crazy for two reasons. One, you're in the freaking air, so that means you're not getting thrown. Um, secondarily, as well, is that you're coming down plus, so you get a pot. You get a. Uh, oops. You're coming down plus, so that means you get a mix up. That is crazy. That is crazy. Look at that. Oh, he's doing his uh, animation afterwards. So, it's honestly a super good tool. You can even catch people by just doing double Kuga, reset into plus frames. Oops. In fact, I will also suggest you to uh, do something like this. This is good practice on having to do a super fast TK input. Uh, I did this with Lene when I was first starting to play her like a couple weeks back. And man, it's it got gets you crisp on the TK inputs. Uh, two different things also to know, A moves Lene really far forward and it has that 45 degree angle. So although B is really good in this range, you can kind of dece deceive people by being slightly closer. Oops. And you can still get the A Kuga. Uh, it's more of an issue when you're up close, obviously, because you stay closer in that way. Or if you're in the air, then you might be able, you might actually go the other way, which you don't want like that right there's some applications for doing it in the air like that like i said you can air dash afterwards but for the most part what you're trying to do is trying to force plus frames here and then get a mix up afterwards you i think you're let's look at frame data let's not just say things we have the we have the technology um air kuga is plus three at worst for the b and plus six at best uh plus at worst, plus six with A, and then at worst, plus six with B. Uh, like before, the A version is slightly slower, but not as much of a differential as A and B are on the ground. This is super slow. This is super fast. As you can see, much, much closer, but the B one is technically faster, but has less frame data. So, plus six, let's go, right? That's insane. Um, super duper good. Uh, the last thing that's kind of busted about it, really, is that you're able to combo off this. And I don't mean you get to combo off this like, oh, like I'm in their face, I get to combo off this. I mean, oops. That's a bad combo, but you see my point. You can always combo off this. You can always combo off this. That, it's like just the cherry on top of it being like, if I swing into it, then I die. Uh, if I press buttons afterwards, then I die. If I try to throw her, then I die. Like, it is just such a good move. It's only hindrance as a move is that it has startup frames. I think that's it. Uh, it's a considerable amount of startup, so she has people have the ability to swing into it. Right? But other than that, this move is sick. I think it's one of the coolest moves that in the entire game. It just it just opens so much up for creativity. You can even just get like you can get like just 
crazy clever with the sort of stuff like that, right? Backdash, you can, if you're expecting moves, you can do stuff like that. You can do force function in their phase. Uh, just, like I said, like repeated Kugas. Just a lot, a lot of cool stuff you can do with this move. Both versions have an increase version of it move, which instead of doing a traveling hitbox, has a... Whoops, did I get it? First try? First try, boys? Has... Oh, no, I didn't. But you can see there's a little bit of a trail. It has a flat projectile hitbox that is out all at the same time rather than it being a traveling hitbox. So it has different uses in that regard. Uh, they are both also plus... Uh, but for the most part, you're going to use the ground version to confirm off of 6-6-C like that. Oops. Um, the air one is kind of tricky. There are some combo potential for it. But for the most part, honestly, like, uh, it, it's like... I wouldn't consider like thinking about it too much other than that you kind of get some massive plus frames off of it and you can do some really silly stuff with it because when you CS it you get the follow-up hits afterwards and then you can do um whoops there it is some crazy high low stuff with it like that All right, DP, 236A. So she has a pretty standard array of DPs, uh, DP stuff. A is five frames and fast and also special cancelable. Kuga, being the dope move that it is, gives you the ability to be plus afterwards. How sick is that? It's very hard, but technically you can do it on the ground as well. Um, so you can get better plus frames that way. Because ATP will start the pushback, you will get more hits than if you just do it up close like this. As you can see, three hits. Oops. Ah. Five hits if you do it off the cancelled ADP version. All right. Cancelable at any time, except for the recovery. Uh, if they're crouching, like you'll go over them, as you can see right there. But if you do it early enough, you'll be able to get at least a couple of the hits on there to keep yourself safe. BDP is one frame slower than some other people's BDP. Uh, like almost everybody else's BDP. Oops. You can do some silly stuff with the combo afterwards. Shout out to Brandon. I stole that from him. Uh, C version kind of sucks. <laughs> it is as fast as A, does not have that much um, invul, but the cool thing about it is that it takes forever because they go all the way to the floor uh, before they attack. So if you're trying to stall us for some extra seconds, uh, maybe use that. Even then, I would consider using, uh, what's it called? EX motion because you're able to do concentrate afterwards. Uh, pretty typical DP stuff. Mm, sorry, looking at notes. Mujin! Uh, I had double slash, uh, whatever you want to call it. Uh, most people will call it Mujin because she says Mujin, so it's easy to see what uh, move you're kind of talking about. Uh, there's a lot that goes on with this move, and it's also one of those moves, I think, when I watch better Linne players play with this character, you under, end up understanding more about the character as you go along. Uh, let's talk about the character in general, or let's we'll talk about the move set in general first, and then we'll talk about its application in a while, because I kind of want to go list, and then what we're doing. Uh... Just the first one, 214A, is actually uh, safe, fast, at two hits, and mostly used for that if not needed for some combo-specific thing. B is slightly slower. Um, oh, uh, secondarily, is that it's hard to frame trap with since it has follow-ups. Uh, it is 
almost impossible to do. But uh, I, maybe it is possible. I don't, I'm not sure. Uh, B, however, is slightly slower. Oops. And has the ability to do uh, or to frame trap with it. The better thing about it, really, is that it hits all the way to the floor. So actually, OTGs, as you can see. If you do the A version, oops. It does not, which sucks. Um, CDP, or sorry, uh, C Mujin, as I said before, it's okay. Uh, there is some application. There's some application for it moving forward that far in eight frames. So it goes through some projectiles and stuff like that. It has some punishes where she wouldn't get a punish before. Like if it's outside of 2B range and it's also eight frames, she's able to move forward and get a hit like that. There's some application there. But for the most part, like I said before, you're mostly using this to waste time because... Oops. It just takes forever for the move to do. And then you're able to concentrate afterwards. Uh, and get some extra time on the Vorpal Cycle, or if you're trying to kill the clock. Follow-up. So every one of the Mujins, uh, other than C, like A and B, has all three follow-ups, A, B, C. 214 AA does two slashes that are slightly faster. Uh, it can be used for combo potential. Uh, it's also really good when you want to go for a cross-up uh, because of the way that it hits them. So you can see, pretty easy to uh, side switch with that. Uh, B, the B one you're going to mostly... Oh, uh, secondarily, it's also negative one, so it's safe, uh, which is really nice. And then I'll talk about its application afterwards. B, the B one version, sends them uh, full screen and also uses wall bounce if you're close enough. Uh, so... It uses the wall bounce. It pushes them far away. It's a good combo ender if you want to do. Send them full screen and then get a start concentrating. It can be used for that pretty nicely. Um, you'll also see this used in the, co uh, in the corner like this. Oops. And then you go into the full C Ender, so you're able to get two different moves. Uh, you're able to get a special move in before your uh, CCC Ender. And uh, that's, you know, just extra damage in the corner. That stuff's really nice. CDP. This is, or sorry, C Mujin. C Mujin is probably the one you're going to use the most or want to use the most for combos because it has not only four hits and has the ability to combo off of easier. A lot of the times you're inputting Mujin at a very specific timing and sort of doing the follow-ups might be kind of tricky. If you just do your C Mujin afterwards, then you have the ability to like relax for a second. Um, there's some... There's some extra stuff that you can do with it because of how far the hitbox goes. If I were to do that combo, it do, uh, if you're able to do that combo like with A Mujin, it does not work. But C, uh, C follow up Mujin does. It's the most damaging. Uh, it has the ability to combo off of uh, pretty easily because of how it hits them. As like remember, if you do A follow up, it kind of pulls them up like straight up if you do b follow uh, c follow up it kind of hits them far forward so it's pretty easy try to use this one as much as you can if you can't then you're using the a version uh okay application so for the most part you're going to be using this in combos but you can use this in block strings as well because of its really unique uh not really unique because of its it's good frame data it's, it has really really good frame data so this is negative three right but this is negative one. So what you're going to see is that you're going to have people expect that Mujin follow-up negative one is going to be the one that you want to go for more often because obviously you have the ability to move around better afterwards, right? However, because of that, if they're not expecting uh, the opponent, or if they're expecting the opponent to do um, just the single... Ooh, 
just the single Mujin follow-up afterwards, or the, the just do the Mujin follow-up like that, so they're negative one. If that's the case, that means that they're going to wait longer on block. And you can go for a throw, uh, tricky throw setup afterwards and reset pressure. This is going to scare some people into doing uh, to doing some crazy stuff. Because they're going to be like, oh, he did Mujin. He's going to go for a throw afterwards. He, they might, uh, at that point, like that. Or if you're doing, uh, whoops. Uh, or if you're doing something like that, then, or if you're just doing the first two hits, then you'll have the ability to, like, just block afterwards. Or if, let's say, you've now scared them into not pressing anything afterwards, then you can go for a mix of afterwards or something like that because they, maybe they're expecting a throw, so they might go for a throw tech. And then you go for the overhead or something like that. There's a lot of play that you can do with that. Uh, the C, B, and C follow-ups don't have really that sort of ability. You're mainly playing on block with the A version. Uh, but, you know, like I said, if you wanted to do, uh, like, a tricky fame trap thing, you can cancel on Nakuga or um, chain shift in order to keep yourself safe. If you want to use that as a frame... Uh, frame uh, a uh, frame trap. However, like I said, you're doing that from the B version, which it itself is unsafe. So a lot of stuff goes into that. Learn how to play with that. For the most part, I think if you're starting out early on, just use a Mujin for block strings. Later on, you'll be able to like uh, throw that stuff in there and scare some people for sure. All right, Hien. So this is also, uh, we call it Hien because she yells Hien. It's also the move name in Japanese. Uh, this is mainly going to be used as a combo tool for most people, but has some weird frame trap applications to it as well uh, that you can play around with if you want. Have a lot of ways to like sort of scare people into doing stuff uh, with, uh, with Hien and gives you the ability to, you know, kind of scare people. But it's a mid and it's unsafe. It's mainly going to be used for combos. Oops. Oh, B. Uh, yeah. yeah. So B hands actually an overhead. Whoops, that's Dragon Fang. Uh, B hands an overhead, and if you actually hit it as an overhead, you get a full combo off it. Which is really cool. Which is really really cool. Um, it is slightly slower, it goes slightly farther, so if you're gonna use it like, oops, if you're gonna do it in this range, you're actually gonna just completely go over people. Unlike the A version, which will sometimes go over people, this version does not have a good trailing hitbox at all. However, the C version does, and it kind of goes the B length with the A hitbox. Oops. And, oops. Always comboable, which is really nice. Uh, you can use this for mix-ups, but honestly, like, it's not that good of a mix-up. You're like, oh, yeah, it's an overhead. Uh, more about it is that it's safe. That's the only good thing about this overhead, is that it's safe. Uh, it does have, however, the B version does have an increased version of it, which... We'll turn it into oops, into a low. Uh, you can't combo off this. Oops. Unless you have meter. Or if you have CS. But it is a low. Uh, technically, you can fuzzy this. So because of the difference between the overhead and the low option, if you learn how to time it, you can just wait for a certain amount of frames once you see the move, and then afterwards, you can just throw it before the low comes out because she'll almost always be in range. Um, if she's not in range for the overhead, then you uh, just block low, I guess, right? So, not really a mix-up, even though it's supposed to be designed as a mix-up. If you catch on someone, cool. Uh, the neat thing about it is actually that the increased version, if you hit... If someone is in block stun or hit stun, sorry, hit stun. If someone is in hit stun, it actually has a different hitbox that it'll hit on 
uh, which is much earlier. So the low is about 34 frames, I think. The hitbox before is 30 frames. So before where I was showing you and I was trying to hit this where it doesn't work, I was like, oh, okay. Well, you can do that instead and get a full combo. Uh, you do like Mujin afterwards or something like that. I'm not good enough to do it because it's a special move and a special move out, out of hit stun. But you can continue your combo after that. That's where all the good combos lie. All the good combos lie in that move right there. Or the, the good damage combos. All right. Uh, the air input of Hien is not Hien, but rather a move called Dragon Fang. Uh, I wish it knew its Japanese move name, but to, to sort of complete the trifecta or complete the set, but I don't. It's called Dragon Fade. That's a cool name. Let's go with that. Uh, it's an overhead. Uh, it's also a, one of her newer moves, uh, and it is pretty neat in that regard, right? So, uh, difference is A is safe, but it has long startup, uh, just like, well, they all have long startup. A is safe. It is technically safe however maybe don't use it because uh, for that reason all the time because uh it's 24 frames and it's kind of easy to see because of that because not only is it 24 frames but you're in the air 24 frames so it's like even if you're doing it from the ground here why would you do that instead of doing something like this right um B, so A move, A1 is safe, but it doesn't move very far forward, and it's still shieldable to punish. Uh, it does change your air movement. Oops. Like that. So, there is some tricky stuff that you can do with it, maybe. Uh, but, you know, just cheeky, for the most part. B version moves her way farther forward. Way farther forward. So, if you're here, you can just jump in. Uh, a lot of the times you can use this as a way to force yourself in, like that with CS, or by the time you land, cancel in the EX Kuga. Uh, C version is a good combo ender. Uh, it has a nice, like, big hitbox at the end. It's one tick of damage, super duper fast. Uh, which is really nice. If you get something to punish, like, you can get some, like, crazy combos off this. Oops. Uh, but it has the A, it has the A version's trajectory. So, there's, it's nice in that regard. Uh, I should have said, you, you can combo off all of these. Uh, going into 6-6-B is probably your best combo here. Oops. Oops. But yeah, that's the idea. Uh, you're able to do that. You can honestly cut that out instead and just go for the air combo. It's way simpler that way. But if you get some extra damage with Mujin BC, then you have the ability to get slightly more damage. Uh, you can also use this as a combo ender as well, which is really nice. And you'll see that often after EX Kuga. I think you saw me do that a couple times when I did this combo. Like that, if you do a backwards TK input, uh, you have the ability to get that out really quickly and you get a, a good combo ender because of it's a good damage and it's a hard knockdown you're able to chase afterwards. IW, move is cool. <laughs> I don't know how to say that. So uh, it doesn't have great range. It doesn't have great range. It's not like the most amazing move. It does a decent amount of damage. But one thing to know about this is that it does have a gap between the second and third or the the last two hits that's where you punish it because if you don't oops there you go and if you let that geyser go off you're actually she's actually plus uh a lot in there 
Uh, you can get a combo off it if you get it to hit off in a really weird way. There's combos for that. I didn't know them because they're a little bit extra and you don't really need to know them early on. But the only thing to notice is that the punish is between the last two hits, not at the very end. If she lets the geyser go off, she's plus. <sighs> All right, we went to the move list pretty quickly. Uh, I kind of rushed myself, so I hope I didn't miss anything huge. But, uh, oh, 6B. I did miss one thing. I missed just 6B, like, not 6-6B, but 6B. 6B, I think, was stolen from her 6-6B, however. If I recall correctly. Um. Because I think she had this move, and then she got 6B on its own. So 6B shares its 6, uh, 6 6B input, but it's only one hit. So think about it, it's like one hit of it. Uh, the one good thing about it is that it is... Um, sorry, looking at notes. Uh, it's got good range. Deceptively good range. And also, it just has a pretty strong stagger window. There you go. It's got a pretty strong stagger, stagger window for people to swing into. Uh, it's only negative four, so you're able to do it and technically be safe in a lot of situations. I don't expect you to do that. It also serves as a replacement for 5B in certain combos. Oops. And uh, since you're not using the same move twice in a combo, then it gives you the ability to, like, it, it saves a little bit of combo damage because if you didn't know, you use the same normal twice in a combo, it'll stale the damage quite a bit. Uh, it's only 5B, so it's not like you're staling a ton of damage, but it also technically does more damage than the previous versions, or than it's 5B. So, uh, there is some extra combo stuff that you can do with it, like uh, 5A, 6B is a way that you can pop people up slightly higher for some better combos. I think... Um, if you do something like that, I think there is some combo potential for that somewhere, but uh, for the most part, like, it's an extra thing to cancel into, which is really nice. Uh, and that's, like, a, a big reason to use it in general. Gameplay. So, I, I've pretty much alluded this the entire time I've been talking. Um, but uh, the main goal of this character is that she is a very straightforward character that doesn't have too many silly tricks she has stuff like you know like being able to like jump up up here and like do some really silly stuff by crossing up weird and like has dive kicks so she can like be kind of cheeky sometimes but honestly when you get the knowledge down versus the character in matchup this character does not have a lot of shenanigans she's a pretty darn straightforward character uh, people think that she has a lot of shenanigans because she has like a weird roll, she has double jump, she has ability to like be all the way up here. And, like, people are like, oh man, this character is just like going all over the place. What is happening? But honestly, once you get the knowledge down, it's not that big of a deal. Um, so she's a pretty straightforward character and she pretty much plays a very basic version of Undernight. Uh, her main game is strike throw and using that as a basis for her gameplay. A lot of the times your throw is what you're trying to get the most because one thing that's also good about a throw that I did not mention when we were talking before is that it leaves them right at your feet. Really, really nice for that. Um, so you have the ability to get basically mix ups again afterwards when you get the throw. That may her throw is not something that you should be afraid to go for over and over again. Honestly, like just if you get people that are down to block forever, throw them again and again. Because you have the ability to still be in range almost. See and see, I moved ever so slightly to get that throw. Um you have a real you, you have a real threat being here. A real threat. In their face, I mean. Um, although she has not, uh, although she does have overheads, they're not good. I want you to learn how to strike throw with this character. The strike throw being that you're mixing up stuff like, whoops. You're mixing up stuff like doing this instead of, uh, doing other moves. getting stuff like that and then if they're not 
pressing buttons, going up for throws, and then let's say after you've gotten that, uh, oops. Let's say after you've gotten that throw, you're gonna mix them up and go for uh, assault stuff like that. Um, that's basically the core of the character. You're trying to use assaults, trying to use tick throws, trying to catch people into like basically uh, doing stuff that they don't want to do. You reset with pressure with Kuga or uh, using meter and stuff like that. That's kind of your main reason for meter at the highest level other than extending combos when you're trying to kill. Um, she has really, really good space control um, in her range. Uh, that sounds dumb, but you can see that a lot of her moves actually like just cover spaces really, really well, right? Uh, mainly speaking, Kuga. Kuga is one of those things where if you can learn the spacing of it really well, oops, you can be plus in their face and really force your option against them. That's the point, is that you're supposed to be using this Kuga in range and sort of keep people from, oops, uh, keep people from pressing buttons in that range with 6-6-B or 6-6-C, six, six sorry, 5-C, 2-C, uh, like 2-C Kuga, stuff like that. Uh, even doing TK to Kugas at that range, forcing plus frames and scaring people, right? Stuff like that would be really, really good. Uh, she has to, because of one of her strongest tools is that she has great movement, you have to structure her offense against the opponent's weaknesses is not only a character but also as a player as well i think there's characters that can play their gameplay almost no matter what and i think there's characters that have to focus on the opponent um as well as the gameplay to a degree characters like akatsuki and Lene have want you to be afraid of the general mechanics of the game in order for them to excel so you're gonna have to learn how the opponent uses their general mechanics in order to thwart your game plan right a lot of the times that means looking for shield breaks so they can't push you out easily um so that they can't you know respond once you are doing kuga at range a lot of the times that means being able to use hien and not get punished for it right um a lot of the times that means just standing in a range where like let's say this is hides range right here right and learning how to stand slightly outside of that range and throwing kugas right learning where you can operate is a super important part of the character like characters like hide where they want to be in this range well if i'm in this range what are my tools right can i dive kick at this range uh can i do tk kuga regular kuga am i just gonna force my way in by doing something like this over the projectile a lot of stuff and she has a lot of tools and a lot of open-endedness about the character for her to be able to do those sorts of things um since she doesn't have a big way to force her way self in a, like even doing stuff like a hien or doing like dragon fang uh into uh ex kuga those aren't really fantastic options you kind of don't want to use that too much unless you really really need it versus characters like batista uh like uh yuzuriha like um hilda those characters will ask you to force your way in a little bit um but you kind of want to do your best to do dash block instead uh, until you get into the correct ranges uh <sighs> learn how you structure your offense around the opponent's weaknesses uh she has a lot of tools but for the most part she needs to focus on everybody uh's general mechanics and that requires the discerning eye as a player in order to do that um learn to use her movement don't be afraid to experiment with dive kick as a learner later on you'll learn like okay i'm supposed to use this then and not now i'm supposed to bait people like here and not there etc etc right what else to say uh i think that's it like i said really straightforward character she's not that complicated but she has a lot of really fun tools for people to play not a very popular character on the highest level but man uh let me tell you that there's a lot of people who play Lene, or sorry there's a lot of people who fawn over Lene players because they're just so unique as players i per personally mean like 
man, let me tell you, uh, if you ever mention the names like Brandon or Miller, like I'm there watching. I'm watching their gameplay. I love watching them play because I think Lene is such a sick character to watch. Um, because she just plays so much under night. She just plays a tremendous amount of under night. Um, it's, that's not always the best thing. <laughs> let me tell you, there's characters that sometimes feel like that they're just playing their own game, but she really, really does embody the game in a very huge way. And I think that makes her such a cool, unique character, uh, to not only learn, but also, uh, to watch.